Welcome back to the Insiders. Yes, that's Quentin Lake saying special team, special plays, special players. Feels good to be back. That's from when he and Ernest Jones there uh, arrived for the start of offseason workouts for the Rams, a season that's got many of them feeling extremely optimistic. So let's bring in Quentin right now, uh, the defensive back for the Rams who saw more playing time last year, and I believe he's going to see even more playing time. Uh, in that secondary in 2024. Quentin joining us from Los Angeles, the NFL Network studios out there. Quentin, how did your offseason, or at least the spring part of the program, treat you guys? Yeah, the, the spring part of the offseason was great. Um, you know, it's always fun getting back into the building with your guys and seeing the coaches and the staff and, you know, everybody around. But, um, you know, we have a really good team. Uh, everybody's excited about this new upcoming season. So I can't wait to bring the momentum that we actually had in the spring you know, to training camp and eventually to the season. Your own particular career sort of took off last year, um, and PFF calls you one of their big breakout candidates for 2024. So what clicked in your mind? What clicked last season, and where are you going from there? I think the biggest thing for me was just being able to be versatile. Um, I started off at dime linebacker early in the season and then ended up moving to um, nickelback. So I always credit myself as being a versatile player, and that's one of the biggest things is why I was able to elevate, you know, eventually later in the season and, and get that play, playing time that you guys saw. But um, being able to understand a playbook and being able to play multiple positions is what kind of elevated me to be able to have the playing time that you guys saw. Yeah, you talked about multiple positions. You saw a lot of time in the slot. Uh, you expecting to play a little more safety? Uh, spot uh, or safety uh, time as well this year. I mean, uh, Chris Shula, the defensive coordinator out there, uh, certainly thinks highly of you. And Sean McVay talked about you as a versatile piece and a key piece of that defense. Yeah, I mean, you know, we'll see. We'll, we'll see when, you know, the time comes in training camp. Obviously, I've had my fair share of snaps at safety, at nickel, in a bunch of different positions. Um, but Chris Shulis, our defensive coordinator, and Sean McVay, who is, I think, one of the best coaches, if not the best coach in the NFL, have really leaned on me this offseason to kind of lead that room. And, you know, that's something that, I, you know, I want to do. I want to be that, have that leadership role, have that vocal leadership in the back end, you know, to help our, our team win games. Um, but those are two amazing coaches that have really helped me elevate my game. And I'm just excited to, you know, obviously work with them and, you know, share the experience and the journey that, you know, they envision and that I envision for myself. There's a lot of new faces on that defense. Obviously, yeah. the new defensive coordinator. You got two rookies that were drafted high for the defensive line, some veterans in the defensive backfield. And, of course, the big one is who's not there, Aaron Donald. Yeah. What does it mean when a defense loses a player like that, a player and a leader like that? Yeah, sometimes you talk about, you know, are you going to replace him? And as we know, you can't place, you can't replace Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald is, you know, the greatest defensive player that we have seen. Um, you know, and he, you know, Sean McVay talked about it. He said he was full. And Les Snead did a great job of finding guys to, you know, fit our scheme, our new defensive scheme. Um, but Aaron Donald did a great job of making sure that the guys that were behind him and the guys that were with him were ready. You know, guys like Kobe Turner, guys like Bobby Brown, Byron Young, you know, the young players, young up-and-coming talented players are ready. Um, and obviously, like I said, Les Snead and his staff did a great job of, you know, bringing in new players to kind of help, you know, up, upgrade and uplift our scheme. You know, guys like Jared Verse, which was our first-round pick, and, and Braden Fisk, our second-round pick, these are guys that, you know, love the game, fit our culture, and I'm excited to see what they're going to do. Obviously, seeing them in OTAs and obviously in mandatory minicamp, these guys, they're, they're outstanding players. And it should be really exciting to, you know, for them to show the fans and even us as players what they can do this upcoming, this upcoming season. Quentin, we spoke earlier in the show about Sean McVay talking about the youth on this roster. Yeah. It's got him excited and said yeah. it feels like to him year one again. Have yeah. you seen uh, the way that he has responded this year? I mean, I know he's had uh, a couple of years to get this thing moving in the right direction and feel good about his own situation. Can you see him being rejuvenated right now? Oh, I see it all. I see it every day. I see it every day, especially uh, during OTAs and in practice, too. You know, obviously, he's a young coach that, you know, stays active and stuff like that. But, you know, from the defensive field, we see him running with the receivers during practice. You know, if it's pat and go, <laughs> he's running a go route himself. Um, and he even throws, you know, he throws the DB's passes, you know, when we're doing our individual drills. So having a coach like that, having a coach that's so invested and passionate 
and wants to be a part of it, you know, as players, we feed off that. You know, that's, that's something that players want to see in their coach is them being active. And even more so when we're in the room, you know, when we're in the film room, he's a guy that's still learning the game too about how he can attack defenses, what we as a defense can do better in terms of our adjustments. So having a coach that's not only the, really the leader of the program, but also a student of the game himself is something that we feed off as players. All right, Quentin, I got to ask you about the broadcast boot camp that you went through, which is probably obvious to everybody watching this interview that you went through a broadcast boot camp because you're coming for everybody's job already. But afterwards, you tweeted that media is no joke. What would yeah. you mean by that? And what would you get out of that boot camp? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that go into it. You know, you, you don't necessarily see what, you know, you guys have to do and what the rest of the, whether it's a broadcaster, what it's, whether it's an analyst, have to do. There's so much preparation that goes into it. And the broadcast boot camp was one of the most ex amazing experiences and opportunities that I had to do. Obviously, we're here, at, you know, at the studio going through a series of different you know, events, um, whether it was radio analyst, analytics, whether it was on camera TV commentary, or whether it was just doing stuff like this in the studio, um, there's a lot that goes into it and it was so fun. You know, this is something that I wanted to do because I feel like I have a good knowledge of the game and I can, you know, explain that knowledge in, in, a, in a great way and teach people that don't really necessarily know it in a way that makes them learn. Um, but yeah, the broadcasting boot camp, it was hard. It, it, was, it, was, it was hard in a good way. It, it challenged you because as a player, you think, you know, I can do this. I can go in and do this, but you have to do your homework. You have to take notes. You have to, you know, be able to listen and kind of humble yourself a little bit because this is a new environment, especially for me. And I was, I, I, you know, coming out of that, obviously, I, I had an experience that was great, but it also made me learn that, you know, if I want to do this, you have to really work hard because this is not only is it a competitive field, but it is a field that, you know, if you don't work hard and you don't do, take home, do your homework and take notes, you know, it's tough. It is tough. We appreciate you acknowledging how difficult this job can be for us. <laughs> yeah, credit, uh, no, however, credit, credit to you guys and what you guys do because it is no joke. No, there, there's a however coming here. Yeah. Stop making it look so damn easy. Okay? No, no, like, no. Yeah. See, see, that's the thing. You know, I wish, I wish I was in the, you know, I don't know if you guys are at home, but that's pretty awesome to, you know, be at home and do this. There's a, there's a ton of cameras that I can, you know, you might get lost in the cameras and all the lights in the studio, but you no know, credit to you guys and what you guys do. It, it, it's fantastic. And you know, it's honestly, it's really impressive. Uh, I'll spare you the visual rocking the shorts right now. You know, you <laughs> hey, got the full <laughs> yeah, That's awesome. That's awesome. Quentin Lake, uh, we appreciate your time, man. Uh, you're doing great work. We look forward to working with you one day. In the meantime, best of luck on your NFL career. Best of luck to you and the Rams in 2024. Thank you guys so much. This was awesome.